Hey, how's it going? This is Russ, and I'm going to make a quick YouTube video on how I make homemade beef jerky. So, it's pretty easy. Um, it's how I make it. I'm not saying it's the best way, but it seems to have worked out for me pretty well. So, the first thing you want to do is make marinade. So, you want to soak your jerky, give it some flavor, and this is not the container you want to use for marinade. This is plastic petroleum based product no ever uh, put some chili or some spaghetti or some chicken soup or food in one of these guys take it to work put it in the microwave eat your food come home wash it and there's like a permanent discoloration of orange and red in the plastic that tells me that there's some intermingling of the foods and the BPs of the plastic so not really a big fan of eating plastic, so I use glass. So these are some nice, actually antique, I guess, from the 50s. Uh, fridge boxes, they're made out of glass. I like them because I'm into antique stuff. And uh, also, I think they're uh, much better for uh, this application. So. I'll be using these glass containers. To make the marinade. Okay, new camera angle. Um, so the first ingredient you want to use is garlic. Garlic adds an essential flavor to your jerky. And I am a big proponent of using fresh ingredients. So I went into my fridge. And this is all the garlic I have. So I'm not going to use that. It's already starting to grow. I'll probably try to plant it. I don't know, but it's not going to happen now. But fortunately, I have this tube, which I didn't even know I had in my fridge, of garlic. So it hasn't expired yet. So I'm going to just poo a little bit of garlic in there. Or maybe a lot of garlic in there. Okay. I actually want to get rid of this because it is about to expire. Pretty strong stuff. Okay. So, that covers the garlic side of things. And then, along with garlic, you've got the onion. Right, so went into my pantry, and this is the onion I had left. It's not an onion, it's a science project. So obviously I'm not going to be using that. We'll go into the compost heap. Fortunately, I've got a lot of dehydrated onion flakes. So... I do like uh, using dehydrated ingredients because they are concentrated and they last forever. So, get some onion in there. Wow, it's like onion smoke. Okay, so now we want to add some heat, right? I like my jerky hot. So, I've got some. Uh, Cayenne pepper that I grew in my own garden, dehydrated, powderized. So I'm going to put some powdered cayenne in the mix here. Now you can buy cayenne at the store and it's all good. I used it for many years making chili, but once I started growing my own, I found that homegrown cayenne is like much hotter, much more flavorful. It just all in, in general tastes great. So that's the cayenne. Now I'm gonna put some zip in the doodah. Ghost peppers. Drew these for the first time last summer. These are flakes and seeds that I dehydrated. Kind of want to be a little bit conservative here because. These really bring the heat on, but adds a really good flavor to the 
jerky, so. Okay, so we got the garlic, we got the onion, we got the ghost pepper, and we got the cayenne. So that kind of concludes the dry ingredients. So next we'll work on the wet stuff. <coughs> oh, oh, ghost pepper. Okay, so now we're going to add some citric acid to the mix here because one, it adds flavor, and two, it helps with the preservation process. So normally I would use like a fresh lemon, but I don't have any fresh lemons. It's not lemon season, and I don't have extra money to buy lemons. So went to my fridge, and I found like three of these things. I, you know, I don't even know why I have three of these. I wouldn't even know why I would have one, but I do have three of them. So... Uh, varying expiration dates so they all look good so I'm gonna use the old that one's still sealed there we go just throw a little citric acid in there When life gives you lemons, make some jerky. All right, so now we've got the garlic, the onion, the zip and the duda, hot spice. It's time to add the wet ingredients. So the two staples of my jerky is Worcestershire sauce and soy sauce. So. They're kind of like opposite ends of the spectrum. Worcestershire sauce is Worcestershire sauce, okay? I've never bought cheap Worcestershire sauce and thought, man, this is horrible, and then bought really good Worcestershire sauce and thought, this is the best Worcestershire sauce in the world. So when it comes to jerky, I use El Cheapo Worcestershire sauce. Or La Chipo Worcestershire sauce. I'm not sure what uh, Worcestershire sauce identifies as, so I'll just call it non-binary Worcestershire sauce. So I use the uh, Worcestershire sauce that is like really cheap because it's all good. So I'll throw some of that in there. I kind of want to do like a 50-50 on the Worcestershire sauce to the soy sauce. So, it's like about 75 cents worth of Worcestershire sauce there. And we'll do the other El Chipo, La Chipo, non-binary Worcestershire sauce in there. Okay, now with the soy sauce, it's just the opposite, okay? There are good soy sauces, and there are horrible soy sauces. And there is soy sauce that is just like the soy sauce you get in a little packet when you go to the Chinese restaurant. So, I'll put my finger over this right now. This is, I don't even know why I own this soy sauce, because it's like the commercially available soy sauce. Uh, that you find it in any supermarket. It's not good soy sauce. You want to go with a fermented soy sauce. So if you can get into a, a like an Asian market or somewhere that sells soy sauce, it's real soy sauce, and this is what you want to go with. So zoom in here. You want to go with the naturally brewed fermented soy sauce so we'll put that in there start in the middle the good stuff okay so we've got our marinade made, we've got the peppers, we've got the garlic, we've got the onion, we've got the soy sauce, we've got the Worcestershire. Now we're going to add the beef. So what I do is I like to get the uh, 
take the beef and just like get it in the marinade and then kind of perforate it with a fork and I use a chopstick too just to kind of like get it off the fork a lot of people will tell you that you should use London broil or sirloin or whatever for your uh, jerky but you know what if you make a really good marinade it doesn't matter uh, what the cut of the beef is as long as it's beef you don't want to use pork or turkey um, but really the marinade makes the jerky not the type of meat I actually buy my meat um, at Food Lion when they have meat specials so get some good discount meat jerk it up and there you go next step dehydration okay so now that the marinade has taken set into the meat it's just a matter of laying all this stuff out on your drying rack and uh, loading the rack into the dehydrator so this is kind of a tedious but essential part of making the jerky make sure you leave space between each piece of meat <clears throat> so that warm air can circulate around the beef also if you get some like fatty pieces like this one right here go ahead and just discard that because you don't want that gristle it doesn't preserve well and it can make the meat rancid so that's that Okay, jerky's done. It's all dried out. This is what it looks like. Hopefully the lighting's good where you can see this. It's nice and thin. Uh, very dehydrated. One thing I probably should have mentioned <clears throat> at the beginning of this video is if you had in mind the beef jerky that you get like at the gas station or the supermarket, that moist stuff, um, that's not what this is. This is actually really beef jerky. And it's so dry that it made my dog have to get a drink. Come on, Bella. If you heard that, she was just wetting her whistle. Anyway, um, actually, I didn't give her any of this. I don't want to give her hot peppers. I'm just joking. She's just kind of photobombing my video here. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's not the kind of beef jerky that you buy at the convenience store. Okay, that stuff is tasty. I used to eat a lot of it. I don't touch that anymore because it's just full of all kinds of preservatives. So actually he printed out um, just a list of the preservatives and the other ingredients that are in some of your more popular uh, beef jerky s s meat snacks is what I call them. So I won't say the name of these because I don't want to get in trouble, but they sound a lot like Link Jacks and Jim Slim. So beef, water, sugar corn syrup solids, dry soy sauce, hydrolyzed corn and soy protein. I looked that up. That's like an amino acid. It's a flavor enhancer, but it's a protein that's extracted chemically from um, soy and corn. MSG, monosodium glutamate. Uh, the jury's still out on whether that's actually good to put in your body or not. I know that I um, eat that every time I go to the China Buffet and it has an impact, makes my face hot. Um, Sodium erythrobate, sodium nitrate, sodium diacetate. Sodium diacetate is actually a fungicide. Uh, those are all acid and salt based uh, preservatives, basically. So this stuff, of course, is preservative free. Uh, it is very dry, but I make this um, with the idea of having like something I can chew on, a tasty snack, and also something that will last a long time and a good source of protein if I need it. It does have a lot of salt in it from the soy sauce. Um, which is kind of the preservative along with the drying process, um, but not like any MSG or that kind of stuff. So what I'll do is I'll take this, this jerky, and I just vacuum seal it in a bag like this, throw it in the pantry, give some of my friends, my family um, to munch on, and it makes a tasty snack. So 
That's how I make beef jerky. Try it. You know what's in it. It's all good stuff. And it's tasty.